search YouTube and well, there is very little content about these. And that's a complete mystery to me because these are so, so good. Look, I know there are some YouTubers out there with MGFs and MGTFs, both great cars, but you really will struggle to find any current content, any up-to-date videos about the MGF Trophy 160, the brute of the range, the hardcore road-going race car MGF. The MGF in standard form is a good car, but in Trophy 160, well, it's an excellent car. And I'm gonna tell you all about mine, what it's like to own a Trophy 160. And in this video, I'll take the MGF Trophy and you on a drive on one of the most stunning, best driving roads here in the Southwest. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Today, well, I should be at the Pride of Longbridge, but it's been canceled. And well, to be honest, I'm not very lucky when it comes to attending pole. I first went in 2016 when I took my MG ZT260 V8 and Pride of Longbridge was cancelled. Then in 2017, I returned in the MG ZT260 and had a great Pride of Longbridge. Really was a fantastic day. In 2018, again, the MG ZT260 and I went and guess what? It was cancelled. COVID then saw to it that we all missed a few years of the Pride of Longbridge. And last year, in 2023, I took my Rover 800 Vitesse and had another fantastic day out. And I was all set to go again this year in my Rover 600 Turbo. But alas, it's not meant to be. Roll on Pride of Longbridge 2025, the 20th anniversary of the closure of MG Rover. Fingers crossed that one goes ahead. I will certainly be there. The reason that pole was cancelled this year, because Cofton Park is waterlogged. And well, I can understand that here in the UK, it feels like we've had endless days of rain this year. In fact, I've had this car now MOT'd and taxed for approaching a couple of months and I've had very few days that I could drive it. In fact, here's a video of me attempting to clean the car in the garage a couple of weeks ago. Anyway, let me introduce you to my MGF Trophy 160. Take a watch of this video and then do let me know your thoughts on this car in the comments below. Also, don't forget to click that like button and please do subscribe to the channel. You know the drill. In 1995, during the BMW ownership years of the then Rover Group, well, the first genuinely new MG since the early 1960s was launched, the MGF. Now, in a break from tradition with previous iterations of the MG Roadsters, such as the MGB and the latterly the MG RV8, all of which were front-engined rear-wheel drive layouts, the MGF is a mid-engine rear-wheel drive car. And from launch, well, it received near universal praise and quickly ousted the MX-5 at the top of the UK sports car sales chart, which was a hotly contested market at that time with the likes of the Toyota MR2, the Lotus Elan, the Porsche Boxster, and of course, the BMW Z3. And it was thanks to the BMW Z3, more specifically, thanks to BMW's unwillingness to put another Roadster, another two-seater car made by MG into direct competition with its own branded Z3 car, that the MGF from launch was available with the 1.8 litre engine with just 115 or 142 brake horsepower. There really were no plans at that time to put a more powerful MGF into the marketplace, into production. Uh, the MGF was the only model produced by BMW with an MG badge whilst they owned the then Rover Group. And they sold that, of course, to the Phoenix Consortium in 2000. Now, the Rover design team that were working out of Longbridge at the time knew that they had to create more sporting, more hardcore versions of their MG cars if they were to maintain the sporting credentials, the credibility of the MG mark. And well, for a while, that was satisfied by the MGF Cup, the one-make race series that the Rover Group had started back in 1998. 
This was a serious race competition and each year around 30 race cars were produced and these really were proper race cars. Free from BMW's control in 2000 and well keen to set the tone for the future of the MG Rover Group, the Phoenix Consortium set about making big plans for the MG Mark, which of course gave us the brilliant MG ZR, the ZS and the ZT. And with the MG TF, MG's replacement for the MGF now very much in the pipeline and ready for its launch in 2002, a limited edition lighter, lower, faster MGF was produced and it was launched in January 2001 and called the MGF Trophy 160. Just 1,430 Trophy 160s were built with around 800 of those cars coming to the UK market. They were available in only four colours with 14% of the cars built produced in anthracite metallic, just 8% of the cars were built in solar red. 30% of all MGF Trophy 160s are Trophy Blue, leaving 48% of the cars that were built, built in the stunning Trophy Yellow. What's so special then about the MGF Trophy 160? Well, where do I start? First of all, the 160, of course, well, that's a reference to the power that this car produces. Well, actually, it's 157 brake horsepower. And that's thanks to a tuned K-series engine with the VVC, the variable valve control, and, of course, a sports exhaust, pushing this car from 0 to 60 in just 6.9 seconds. The MGF retains that hydrogas suspension setup, albeit it does have a 20 millimeter lower ride height and the Trophy 160 has AP racing brakes and vented discs. So this MG is fast, it's properly planted on the road and it stops well. It's brilliant fun. Cosmetically then, what are the differences? Well, let's go front to back. At the front there, we've got that front splitter. We have a mesh grill and we've got those unique to the Trophy 160 black framed headlights. They look great. Uh, the mesh grille design continues down the side. You've got the side air intakes, which help, of course, to keep this mid-mounted engine nice and cool. And around the back, we've got this unique to the MGF Trophy 160, this spoiler, this boot lid spoiler. Looks really smart. And this car sits on, again, unique to the Trophy 160, 16-inch multi-spoke lightweight alloy wheels. Inside the MGF, well, you're reminded of two things. Number one, that you are sat in a Trophy 160, and that's because it's written here on the back of these lovely half leather seats. And the second thing, well, you are reminded of the exterior color of your car, because the center console and the steering wheel are body colored. I tell you, I need to wear my sunglasses when I'm driving my Trophy 160, whatever the weather. I also believe that the gear knob is trophy specific with the rest of the interior consistent with the wider MGF range of 2001. The earliest MGF Trophy 160s, they didn't come with ABS. I think it was the first 500 or so cars didn't come with ABS or a spare wheel. Mine does have the spare wheel and that was all about keeping this car as lightweight as possible. Now I've owned my MGF Trophy 160 for eight years. In fact, it's eight years this month that I've had this car. And I bought it from a chap called Robert, who was also the guy who sold me my MG ZT260 V8 the year prior to buying this one. For me, it had to be a Trophy 160 and it had to be in Trophy Yellow. I think this is the car in its finest, most collectible form. Albeit, I do like the other MGFs. I loved an MGF Freestyle that I had a few years ago, and I'd love to own an MGF Wedgwood at some point in the future. I think they look absolutely smashing. And for the first few years of owning this car, well, I drove it a lot. I really, really enjoy this car. Uh, we took it on lots of pleasure drives. We took it to a few shows. In fact, wherever I take this car, people come over and make lovely comments about it. After all, it's stunning. It's so striking and so different to anything that you see on the road today. But as my car collection has grown, I found myself driving this less and less. And in fact, it's been parked up for the past three years in my barn. 
That was until earlier this year I got the car out and I had the hydrogas suspension regassed. In fact, you can see the difference in the ride height here in these before and after photos. I had some new tires put on the car. I had a rear brake caliper fitted because that wasn't releasing properly. And I put the car through an MOT. The car had a bit of a misfire, no surprises there really. It had been laid up for three years and everyone was saying to me, it's bound to be the head gasket. But that important job's been done on this car. I was pretty confident that it wasn't. I thought it'd be plugs and leads, which means I needed to gain access to the engine bay, which isn't too difficult on these, if you can believe it. You need to release the roof, which means you need to undo a few of these clips. Then you need to remove the sound deadening and remove the engine cover. And well, there it is, the 1.8 litre K-Series engine. Now being a post 2000 K-Series engine, my car has the two coil packs and not the distributor cap and the four leads of the previous VVC engines. Anyway, I've swapped out the plugs and the leads on this car and it is running absolutely perfectly. And that means I've been able to enjoy this car fairly infrequently on the handful of dry days that we've had this year. And believe me, we haven't had many, but when we have, I've been out having fun. When I bought this car, I, I convinced myself, I suppose, that this is the MGF in its most collectible, its finest form. I thought it'd be a bit of an investment, a car that I could buy and maybe it would go up in value and it probably has. But in truth, I bought this car because I wanted it, because I wanted an MGF Trophy 160. And here I am, eight years on, still owning and loving this car. I really do love it. After all, they don't make cars like this anymore. In fact, outside of the current Mazda MX-5, well, the two-seater roadsters that are made today, they all start at north of £40,000. And they're big, powerful, heavy cars. Give me a lightweight roadster, a 1.8 like this, any day. And as for electric cars, well, I make no secret of the fact that I'm not a big fan of electric cars. And I doubt very much you'll see any electric cars here on my channel. But does the two-seater roadster have a place in this new electric world? Albeit, having said all of that, I have been pretty impressed by the looks of MG's latest Cyberster, if, that, if that's how you say it. Looks to me to be a real hark back to MG's of old. Oh, let's stop talking about electric cars and get back to this. Today, on a day that I should be at the Pride of Longbridge in Birmingham with my Rover 600 Turbo, instead I'm at home here with my MGF Trophy 160. And it's a dry day. In fact, it's a dry weekend. So I'm going to be taking this car out for a drive tomorrow on one of the Southwest's most picturesque, best driving roads. And I'll let you know how this car drives. So stay tuned for that and I'll see you in the morning. It's a road 
filled with fantastic scenery, lovely windy roads, the bendy corners, and uh, well, lots of places to stop, to take a photo, to have a picnic, to take a walk. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it. 25 miles of driving pleasure, and I've picked the best time of day to do it, and it's sunny. And I suppose I couldn't think of a better road, a better drive, to hit up fairly significant mileage milestone for my MG. Yeah, that's right, my MGF Trophy 160 is going to hit 50,000 miles today. And well, it's definitely going to happen today. I left home on 49,937 miles. So it'll probably happen on the journey home. I'll make sure that I feature it for you at the end of the, the video. But that's okay. These cars are meant to be driven. So today's drive, we start in Yelverton, and then from Yelverton, it's out, we pick up the Princetown Road, out to Princetown, onto uh, Two Bridges, onto Post Bridge, and out to Dunsford, which is getting pretty close to, to Exeter. And well, that's all on the B3212, which is renowned as being one of the most haunted highways in the UK. I'll come on to a bit more of that as we get into the drive. Uh, it's 40 mile an hour speed limit here on Dartmoor, but that's okay, the roads are nice and challenging as, as they are. And you've got to keep your wits about you because, well, there's lots of free range, free roaming sheep and cattle and ponies walking around, and I certainly don't want to put one of them through the grill of my MG. So I'm getting pretty close to Yelverton now. So we'll pick up the Princetown Road, and I, and I hope you, will enjoy this drive, and I'll tell you a little bit about the MG along the way. Here we go. It's going to the roundabout now. Let's go. The sun has really started to come out now and you might be wondering well I've still got the roof up. Well that's for you good people so that you can hear me. Believe me on the journey back 
assuming I'm not recording that, I shall have the roof down and maybe I'll put some footage on at the end. But what about this little car? Well, it's absolutely stunning, just as it is out here on Dartmoor. The cornering on this car is, well, fantastic. It's out of this world. That's all thanks, I suppose, to the Hydrogas interconnected suspension system that's on this car and those sports, those competition springs that were fitted to the trophy. I think it makes it about 20 mil lower ride height than the standard cars. But yeah, the cornering is, is just out of this world. I mean, you can put this car into any corner, you feel at any speed and it'll pull you round and you'll come out the other side. And well, that makes for great fun driving up here on Dartmoor. Please say also that the temperature gauge is sat just where it should be, right in the middle. And that's because this is a healthy K-Series engine. And well, a healthy K-Series engine is a brilliant engine. This is a revvy thing. And thanks to the VVC on this engine, the variable valve control, well, you've got a red line that doesn't start until after 7,000 RPM. And the power delivery is just so linear. It's there all of the time. It really drives great. It's, I would say um, it's not a fast car necessarily, but it's fast enough and it feels fast. That's the most important thing. And it feels fast even at 40 miles an hour. assisted steering is is really quick and quite light I suppose one small criticism of the car would be it doesn't give you a great deal of feedback through the steering wheel but there is one compromise with this car I mean look as I've already said the road holding the, <laughs> the road holding there the way the car drives the way it feels it will come out of any corner thanks to that wicked suspension well, it is, is brilliant. The compromise though, my goodness, this is a hard riding car. I don't know if it's coming across on the camera, but I'm jumping about all over the place. You certainly couldn't have a drink in this car, a coffee in the cup holder that folds down here in the centre console. To be honest, I'm just trying to hold on to my feelings. I mean, it's great, great fun. And this is, it's got go-kart-esque handling, this car. That's the best way I can, I can describe it. But yeah, it's a tough ride. As a Sunday drive, it's brilliant. Today, I mean, I shall have a great time driving out to Dunsford and back again along, along this road. But as a daily, I reckon this would be fairly hard to live with. But I'm not complaining. I love the car. Just be prepared. If you're looking at a Trophy 160, yeah, it's a properly hard riding car. But here's a corner, and this is why. Woohoo! This car really is so easy to place on these narrow roads out here on Dartmoor. In fact, I've just finished, I've got to Dunsford and now turned around, I'm on the way back. And those roads as you drive into Dunsford, well, they're in the trees and there's some real twisties. In a bigger car, could have been quite unpleasant, but in this, well, it was just another part of this epic drive across Dartmoor. So I've turned around and I'm heading back. I will get the roof down in a moment, but I remembered that I haven't told you why. This is one of the most haunted highways in the UK, and we survived it one way at least. 
Well, as the story goes, drivers across Dartmoor have experienced, well, a disembodied hand, the hairy hands that reach into your car, grab your steering wheel, and try to force you off the road, the hairy hand of Devon, of Dartmoor. Now, no one really knows who these hands belong to. Uh, some say that it was a long since gone Bronze Age settler who is trying to lure people away from Dartmoor, steer them away from Dartmoor. Others think that it could be an escaped convict from Dartmoor prison that we saw earlier. Someone who escaped and whilst fleeing, well perished on Dartmoor and is trying to lure others into the same fate. I don't know. What I know is we survived it. I know we're doing it in the daylight. And, well, make up your own mind about the hairy hand of Dartmoor. What's that? Very pleasant indeed. Turns out the hairy hand was more of a help than a hindrance on this occasion. And as for this car, my MGF Trophy 160, well, it's just brilliant. It's a very special thing and perfect for a drive such as today. Something about driving a British sports car on a Sunday morning on lovely British roads. Uh, it's been a real, real treat. Now, in previous videos when I featured my cars, I've been ranking them. And well, it's time to rank this Trophy 160. The problem is, when I started ranking my cars, it was around Christmas time. I wrote the list and well, this one was in the barn. And this is a car that I regularly grapple with myself regarding selling should i sell this car after all myself and my two boys were a family of three and this only has two seats so it's difficult to use so it sits in the barn and it's very easy then to think about selling this car but i've got something of a proximity crush when it comes to my mgf having got it out serviced it mot'd it insured it taxed it driving it particularly today out in the sun well, this car is never being sold. I love this car. As for the ranking, I ranked it here. But today, and my proximity crush kicking in, this car needs to go further up the list. But my ranking list changes pretty much every day depending on what I'm driving, the weather, what's on the road. It's like choosing between your favourite children, isn't it? Don't tell the boys that. Uh, parked there now, it's on 49,985 miles, so just 15 to go to that 50k. And well, I will put a picture up at the end, so do stay tuned for that. I hope you've enjoyed this video, this video featuring and introducing my MGF Trophy 160. There really is very little content out there about these cars, and also featuring this spectacular road and drive, which I've really enjoyed. The roof's down now because I'm stopping filming, I'm putting my music on and I'm driving the rest of it on my own. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. If you have, click that like button and share it, please. Uh, if you want to get in touch via the comments, let me know your thoughts on this car, on any of my cars. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already for more on this, my other MGs, my Rovers, my Fords and everything else that comes my way. I really appreciate you watching joining me on this journey and I hope to see you on the next one. Bye for now. Bye bye.